So uh, good morning, and uh, today we will be uh, working on uh, our stem, but not for classification, uh, not for sequence to sequence, but uh, for language model, right? So, so previously we have uh, engaged in um, classification tasks, right? You think um, uh, could be it could be something uh, RSTM or it could be CNN, right? Similarly, we have uh, engaged with sequence to sequence um, using machine translation tasks as a case study, and we have used LSTM, CNN, even transformer, right? So uh, another very important task uh, in, in uh, NLP is a language model and what is basically next token generation, right? So if you're very excited about uh, chat GPT, uh, then that would be probably uh, something that uh, you will be interested in, right? So that today we will be uh, implementing uh, language models uh, using LSTM. And there's actually some examples uh, uh, to keep you motivated throughout the series, right? I don't try to, uh, so this is what I have done. So with the prompt uh, Harry Potter is, uh, it should be able to uh, uh, complete the next sentence, right? Of course, uh, this is not really a pretty sentence like Harry Potter is a member of some old week, is a reference to the church. Um, uh, this is really bad, right? So this is uh, something uh, about the NLP and AI uh, uh, for uh, drawbacks, right? And uh, and uh, yep. So so so. But anyway, uh, uh, using simply simple the uh, LSTM, we can already get some uh, very nice, right? Perhaps if we can train with some uh, real data set of Harry Potter's, then maybe probably uh, we can get a bit even better results, right? Uh, so, yep, so that is uh, what we will be doing uh, today. And uh, so let us see uh, what we have, uh, what we will be doing today, right? So uh, we will be loading some wiki, uh, Wikipedia text, right, from some uh, existing data sets. Uh, in your assignments, uh, I will be asking you to actually load some uh, real data sets from Harry Potter, right? Then, uh, or maybe some uh, like anything, Lord of the Rings, whatever and then you can uh, actually generate some uh, a real story. And then we're gonna do some pre-processing, uh, prepare batch loader, right? And then do some uh, uh, modeling, right? So those are the four parts that we will be uh, uh, coding a lot. Um, and then um, to keep the video short, I have uh, uh, put some training code already here, right? And uh, and, but you don't have to worry about that because it's, it's, it shares a lot of similarities with the previous uh, tutorials, right? And also we're gonna have some testing, right? And uh, uh, real world inference and in what shall we actually generate to Harry Potter's, right? But we're not gonna run the, uh, any code here. Uh, once we reach here, we will switch to the one that I already trained so that we can quickly see the results, right? Without waiting me to train uh, with my MacBook M1, which is going to take uh, a few hours. Okay, great. Uh, so without further ado, uh, let us uh, start this uh, tutorial, right? And so um, make sure we import Torch. Uh, let, me, let me make this bigger. Yep. Um, import Torch.nn as the neural network. And uh, import... Um, Dot optim. That's optim. And uh, import uh, torch dot torch text. All right, uh, data sets, and also the map. All right, so this data set is actually from Hugging Face, right? So we will be uh, loading the data sets from Hugging Face, and we're gonna do some math. Probably not not really a lot of math, uh, and we're gonna use a. Uh, 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 TQDM. Uh, for those who don't know what is TQDM, is it's not really relevant to our tutorial, but it's it just display a very nice uh, progress bar when we train, right? But you're gonna not gonna see this, but uh, my code uh, supports uh, TQDM, so uh, uh, feel free to check it out. All right, so the, we're gonna uh, run this, right? And um, I have some uh, import error, so I will be back uh, once I fix this error, right? Okay, I'm back and uh, it seems like I'm uh, having some typo. So yep, now it's uh, okay. 
now um, let's continue this and uh, we're gonna load some uh, data sets. Okay, before I forgot something, yep, we have to uh, set some device. So we're gonna say torch.device. Uh -huh. Good up. Yep, if um, torch.computer dot is available. Else, friend device, and uh, mine is definitely CPU because I'm using my M1 um, uh, to code this, right? And I'm gonna also set the good practice of using seed. And again, in a, in a research world, and when you publish your thesis, you would want to run this uh, uh, Jupyter notebook uh, two, uh, three to five times, and then average and report that that number in your paper, right? Uh, otherwise, you will be uh, maybe just lucky. Uh, torch .manual seed, seed, all right, and then um, torch dot um, backend. And uh, let's see you DNN dot deterministic um, equal to true. All right, great. Um, so now we can uh, load some uh, uh, data for our. So we're gonna. What we can do is data sets equal to data sets. Um, dot load data set. Um, uh, wiki text. Okay. So, so what is the idea of a language model, right? Uh, so language modeling is uh, is is basically uh, idea of learning uh, mixed uh, token generation, right? So, so wiki Wikipedia is a really uh, a nice uh, source of information, right? Uh, but of course, if you want to write a story like Harry Potter, you may want to use uh, uh, all the manuscript of Harry Potter, right? Uh, then uh, then you can learn how the, the patterns of the next token, right? All right. So I'm gonna load the assets and um, hopefully there will be no problem. All right, I will skip, uh, I will pause and then, okay, okay, it's, it's done already, right? Uh, and then I can print the data set. Right, so you can see that uh, in data set, uh, in hacking phase data sets, uh, it returns me uh, actually three, uh, uh, three uh, data sets uh, in which the key is a uh, test, train and validation and the value itself is a, is a data set, right? In which inside there are features called text, all right? So the, um, I think uh, that's good. Now we can, if we want to actually print it up, how do we do that, right? So I can teach you a little bit how to access uh, this kind of uh, complicated thing, but it's actually not that complicated, right? So what we can do is data set, all right? And then we can say which key we want, let's say train, right? And uh, and then we can uh, identify which row we want. Let's say, I'm not sure we have so many row, like, like 36,000. So we're gonna say like, Two to three. I'm not sure what is that. And then we want to access the text, right? So you can see that in the in the row two to three, uh, the text is actually a little bit of rhyme news and all the blah blah blah, right? So yep. So that is uh, how you can access um uh, the data in here, right? Um, I'm not sure whether I can do this right away. Yep. Right. So you can see that uh, in the train, uh, there's a total of uh. 36,718 uh, uh, rows of text, right? In which each of them has uh, has a, a, a text, right? Good. All right, so I think uh, uh, that is a good way to to get the information about the data sets. So now we are done. So let's close this to make this very nice. All right. Now, uh, the next step is uh, tokenize, uh, is the pre-processing. And again, uh, I try to keep my tutorials uh, very clear and always uh, constant. So you can see that uh, once we load data, the pre-processing is almost always tokenization and numericalization, right? Uh, so so I want you to, to keep understanding that this is a very standard flow in, in NLP always, right? So to, to make sure that you understand this basic thing. So we're gonna do, Tokenizer 
equal to um, touch ticks uh, dot data dot utils dot get tokenizer uh, basic English. All right, so I'm going to use uh, the tokenizer here and um, uh, I'm just going to create a function using Lambda, right? Um, Lambda example, uh, tokenizer, uh, uh, tokens, tokenizer, example, uh, text. All right. So, so this is basically creating a function call uh, that takes an input of example and uh, tokenizer, and then uh, it returns tokens, right? For those who, who are not really uh, strong in programming and you wonder what is Lambda, Lambda is basically like uh, the definition of uh, some name that we don't want to care and uh, example tokenizer, right? And then uh, and we return tokens here. And uh, what, what does this do is basically uh, tokens equal to tokenizer uh, example text, right? So this is uh, basically equivalent uh, of this, uh, and, and the name of the function is actually this, right? Uh, but the Lambda is basically something that is uh, more shorthand and more Python-ish, okay? Great. And then we're gonna do uh, tokenize uh, uh, data sets uh, equal to data set, um, uh, dot map of tokenize data that uh, remove columns. Um, so once we tokenize, we still have the text, right? So we're just going to remove that columns and then, um, uh, we're going to send in the, the arguments. And that is that the tokenizer is basically this tokenizer. Yep. That we have already specified. Yep. And uh, probably, I think uh, this should be a dictionary. Yep. All right. Um, hopefully that should be okay. And um, and then finally, uh, uh, we hope that this is going to be done. So let's let's shift enter and okay. Great, so uh, this is faster than I expected. Um, but now I think uh, we can uh, actually take a look at our tokenized uh, data set. So we're gonna say print uh, tokenized data set. And we're gonna go inside the train again and we're gonna go to 223, the one we have and then text. No, we don't have text anymore, right? Because uh, uh, we already delete the text, right? So we're gonna do tokens and you can see that um, once we tokenize this, everything uh, now uh, things are very is tokenized uh, neatly, and it happens to all the things uh, in train test and validation because we just use uh, this function called dataset uh, dot map, right? Yeah. So, so some so for some people asking uh, is map faster than uh, 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 doing your own uh, custom loop, and that is the answer is yes. Yep. So so try to use this kind of function like that map that apply those kind of thing. Uh, it's gonna speed up your operations. Okay, great. So now we're gonna do some uh, uh, numericalization, and again uh, we're gonna do vocab equal to torch text uh, dot vocab dot build vocab from iterator uh, tokenize uh, data set. Uh, train. So we're going to build our vocab based on our training data sets, right? So we're going to claim that all the vocab existing in the world for this data set is, comes from a train, right? Otherwise, anything that is not here is considered unknown. And we're going to also put uh, something called mean minimum frequency. And if, if those word doesn't appear at least three times, uh, we're not going to consider as a vocab. And also we're gonna do a cap uh, dot insert. So can uh unk. and we're gonna give a, a, a index zero and also vocab dot insert uh okay. and uh go s. 
one and uh, we'll have dot set default index. Um, and the default index could be unc, right? So to if, if, if there's no index of that um, vocab, then we just assign unc. And I think uh, that should be it. And we can now print how many vocabs we actually have in our, in our, so we have 29,000 words uh, existing, right? So, so you guys can play around, right? Uh, so for example, we can do print uh, vocab uh, dot get uh, ITOS, right? I'm not sure, I don't remember what that stands for, but basically just, um, it maps uh, some our uh, some index to actual tokens, so I just want to print it out, and um, let us print the first ten. Yep. So we can see that uh, vocab number one is unc, next is EOS, and blah 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 blah. Uh, you may wonder uh, why we need uh, EOS because um, uh, when we reach the last word of a sentence, we want to print. We want it to predict EOS. Right. Otherwise, that there's nothing to predict. Right. Yep. So, so that's why we need a EOS uh, token here for the language model. All right. Great. So now we, uh, we are doing great on pre-processing. Uh, hopefully, that doesn't take too much uh time on the video. Right. So now we can uh, prepare a batch loader. Right. So let me explain uh, what we uh, what plan to achieve. Right. So for example, I have uh. I have uh, all this text in my Wikipedia. So Chucky loves eating at AIT and I really love uh, deep learning, right? So so uh, if I, so this is all in the Wikipedia text, right? All connected, like all in one bunch of text, right? So we have one, two, three, four, five. And here's one, two, three, four, five. So there are 10 uh, words or 10 tokens here that I can expect. If I add an EOS or end of sentence token here, this will be six. And if I add here, there will be six. So total in 12, right? So let's say I have a batch size of three. I want to cut uh, this into three batch and then learn each of the batch, right? So, so how do we do that? Well, we can uh, 12 divided by three, that would be four, right? So in each batch of data, we will see something like this. Chucky loves eating at, uh, and then AIT, EOS, I really, and then love deep learning EOS, right? And you may say, it doesn't make sense. Like, why do you chop this, right? Well, it doesn't really matter because what we want to do is uh, 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 predicting uh, the next word, right? So the, uh, it doesn't matter uh, that it's chop, right? Uh, when we have Chucky, we want to predict loves. When we have Chucky loves, we want to predict eating. When we have Chucky loves eating, we want to predict and, uh, et cetera, right? So, so it doesn't really matter how do we chop, right? So that is uh, uh, how we are gonna do in, in this uh, uh, tutorial. All right, so now um, uh, we're gonna create a, a function called get data, uh, data set, uh, vocab, and uh, the batch sizes, right? So, so that is something uh, we need to uh, have. And we're gonna say data, firstly, uh, this is the, the probably the main place that hold all the, the information. And then we're gonna say, for example, in data set, all right? So for each example in data set, mm -hmm. uh, if uh, example is uh, tokens, all right, to make sure that uh, we're actually looking at uh, the tokens uh, column, uh, what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna say tokens uh, is equal to example tokens dot append. So firstly, we're gonna add the EOS. All right, and then we're gonna do, um, uh, we're gonna apply numericalization to a cap, token um, for token and uh, example tokens. And then we're gonna do data.extend uh, tokens. 
Yep. And you may wonder, like, what is uh, this extent? Extent is basically not creating a new list. It just uh, it just put this list and extend this list. So, 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 uh, for example, if I have uh, a equal to this list, right, and I have b equal to another list, right? Uh, if I say uh, 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 b dot extend a, uh, then uh, whatever in a will be inside this list and this list will be gone, right? But if you do append, uh, there will be extra lists, which is not something we want. We want a complete list of uh, tokens, all right? All right, so now, um, uh, once we have that, what do we do is uh, we're gonna do data dot, make sure that this uh, long tensor, for those who have uh, keeping up with all my tutorials, I think it, you you will see a lot of similarities between my previous tutorial and now. It's just basically uh, adding something, nucleize it, and then convert it into PyTorch, right? So it's it's basically uh, very similar to my previous uh, num batches uh, equal to um, data dot shape zero, right? So this is the number of tokens I have in my data set. So, so once I chop everything, uh, then I will have, uh, for example, in my sentence, and there will be 12. So this will be 12, right? And, uh, and uh, my batch size is basically uh, three in my example in, in this, right? So here, num batches will be uh, 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 four, for example, right? Um, and then uh, now what we can do is uh, we can make sure that um, we only get the data until um, data until what? Until uh, num batches uh, times batch size, right? So basically if this is three and this is four, I just want to reach until uh, 12, that's it, right? And I cut whatever that is left. So this uh, this this double slash is basically an integer division. So if this is a thirteen, and this is three, it will be four, right? So I just say I want to get onto twelve, for example, and cut the last 12, uh, 13, uh, just to make sure that uh, all our batches are uh, even. Yep. And then uh, finally, I just gonna reshape this um, batch size and uh, num batch. Right. So now once I have that, that uh, this will be three and this will be four. Right. So each of each of the batch will have four words here. One, two, three, four, for example, or if you and one, two, three, four. Right. So that is uh, the batch size. The batch size is basically batch one, batch two, batch three, and the num batch is basically each of them have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Right. All right. And the view is basically the same as reshape. And you may wonder like, why not using reshape? Uh, uh, for those who are wondering, like you may want to search uh, view versus uh, reshape. Uh, but the idea is basically uh, whether your data is uh, is uh, contiguous. And, and, and again, uh, uh, contiguous is basically whether your data is uh, all aligned in the same memory contiguously, right? But yep, I, I think uh, talking about that will take maybe like five minutes and, and, and I don't want to talk about that too much to keep the video short, right? So make sure you, you uh, or you can come to my class and, and ask me, yep. All right, return data, great. So now the, uh, the data is basically batch size and then sequence length, right? So so the, the, that is probably uh, the right way to, to understand the shape, right? Now, uh, finally, uh, we can actually do this with our, so let's say I have that size of 128 and I'm gonna do train data equal to get data. So I'm gonna apply this function to my tokenized data set of train. All right, so let me, and, and I'm not sure, I don't remember what to do. So I need to send in what cap and batch size, right? Cap and batch size. All right. And I'm gonna do this the same uh, for um, uh, 
validation, right? And then I also need, I'm gonna also do this the same for um, S, all right. Great, so I think uh, that should be uh, it for it. Um, so we can, let's, let's firstly do this and um, okay, great. So uh, probably yeah, the name here is uh, validation, yep. validation. Yep. All right, great. So we got this, now we can maybe take a look uh, whether there's a shape here and we can see that we have a batch of 128 uh, batches and each of the sequence length is a 16,000. That is a lot, right? Great. Great, so uh, um, that is uh, uh, what we have now uh, in, the, in the preparing uh, the batch loader, right? Uh, for those who are asking, like, can I do this in a data loader PyTorch way? Yes, All right? So you put this inside the, uh, the, the usual function that we, you, you, you do it in data loader, right? And that, that should be also be possible, right? Great, um, so now, the last thing we're gonna do in this tutorial, and then we're gonna just uh, look briefly in the training, and then we're just gonna show the results, right? To keep the video uh, short and uh, to not bore you guys too much. Uh, great, so um, uh, what is the idea of this uh, 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 forward function, right? Um, so the idea is very simple, right? Uh, we, we fit in, uh, so, so you can imagine uh, in the model link, uh, we, we, we just feed in into some recurrent neural network and that is our stem. And uh, we just feed in Chucky loves eating. And then we just wanted to predict app. That's it, right? So it's just, uh, uh, it, 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 for those who already study uh, sequence to sequence, uh, there's no longer an encoder and decoder. Basically we just use, we just have one, like one LSTM that predict uh, the next token. Yep, that's it. There's no encoder or no decoder. But basically, you can see that this is basically a, a decoder, like one one hour stem. There's no more two hour stem. Yep. So, but but to make clear, maybe we can uh, close and then uh, you guys can gain more understanding. So we're gonna say language model and dot module and uh, in it. All right. So those are the first things we need to draw. And uh, I also gonna have uh, init weights. Uh, so this is optional, all right? Re re remember that in, in the previous one, I have init weights outside, but now I can also put it in the class. And you may take a look at how do I do it. And um, I gonna have uh, init hidden, right? So the, if we, uh, we can also optionally, uh, when we when we talk to our stem, we don't we may not um, we just send in uh, the input and it will uh, automatically create a new hidden right. Uh, but here I want to create uh, uh, in a hidden so that I can always uh, refresh it right um, and uh, detach hidden. So, right. And uh, lastly, uh, for it. So, all right. All right, so now we can uh, uh, type some thing here, all right. So first thing uh, we need to do in here, uh, I'm just gonna put some pass here so that it doesn't uh, have some alert here. And uh, okay, great. And uh, once I type here, th this will be gone. All right, and so we're gonna say super um, in it. All right. And um, uh, we have a num layers, uh, this is just uh, for the sake of um, uh, uh, defining the our stem, right? So self.hitthem equal to hitthem, 
right? And then the self dot embed them equal to embed them, right? And uh, in that case, uh, we have to vocab size, uh, embed them, embed them, um, num layers. And uh, I'm just going to add that drop of loop right here too. All right. Um, and then we're going to have also embedding, right? So so this embedding is basically you, when you input the, the text, right? Uh, that is probably the first thing it will do is that is uh, embedded first into some vectors and then send it to LSTM, right? Um, and then nn.embedding. Uh, we'll capsize and back them. All right. And then uh, we also need to have uh, the LS team for us to. So this is the one that actually use all the parameters we need. So it needs to know uh, what is the embedding dim, what is the hidden dim that you want to convert into, how many layers you want, and uh, what is the dropout rate. Right, and this dropout rate, uh, if you look the, if you read the documentation clearly, uh, this dropout rate is basically between layers of our stem, right? So the first layer will not have any uh, dropout. Um, and then batch first, they go to true. And lastly, um, we're gonna define some uh, dropout, go to and then the robot. This may be used in uh, after a certain uh, process too. And then um, here I got uh, some, I think I should drop out equal to, yep. Um, and of course we need the FC layer, right? So this FC layer is uh, after we send to all the LSTM, right? And then uh, it's gonna, it gonna uh, uh, pass to a okay. Why not? I pause my video just a little bit and then uh, copy some uh, some of my lectures uh, photos and I put it here and so you guys can see uh, what I'm I'm trying to do. All right, please give me one second. All right, so now I have uh, added uh, this uh, pictures for you guys. Right, so this is a basically a very simple RNN LM, and you can imagine that this can be RNN, this can be our team, this can be our uh, GRU. Uh, whatever, but basically the idea is that we feed in each of the token, it's gonna be embedded, and then uh, become uh, 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 some uh, hidden uh, state, all right? And this hidden state is forwarded, and then once again, you feed the next token again. So this could be uh, Harry Potter is uh, flying, right? And then you want to predict the next token, you send the last hidden state to some linear layer, it could be this U, right? And then softmax, and you will get the the the, the next word could be flying on, right? So so that is uh, uh, the very simple uh, depiction depiction of uh, the language model I want to do, right? So now uh, FC. Uh, so now let me just uh, look at my okay, FC equal to um, NN dot linear. Uh, hit them for cap uh, size. And then the next, the last thing, I'm going to also run uh, init weights. And, uh, okay, great. I'm not going to uh, actually uh, run this. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm not going to write this yet. I'm just going to go to the forward so you guys can can know what is the actual uh, thing here. So the, firstly, when, when we exact uh, the data, we have a source and the hidden, right? So we're gonna have source, uh, batch size and sequence length and uh, embedding. Uh, the first thing we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna apply uh, embedding first. So embedding and then do some dropouts so that you can learn some pattern. Uh, and then uh, next thing uh, we're going to want to do, so now uh, embedding uh, the shape is um, 
SI sequence length, embedding, dim. Uh, and uh, now what we can do is we're going to uh, output hidden equal to uh, self.lstm uh, embedding hidden. All right. So the reason why we need to uh, send the hidden is because uh, we want to make sure that uh, this hidden is always carried forward, right? We have always uh, some hidden that is uh, uh, keep on moving forward, right? So the, that's why we need to keep this uh, variable hidden, right? Um, output uh, is a batch size, uh, sequence line, and hidden dim. All right, and then finally, uh, hidden, the hidden states, right? It's basically um, sequence length and hit them, right? So, 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 so for the hidden, uh, once you pass in this one, uh, this one is basically the hidden dim, and how many I have? I have four of them, right? If I have forwards, right? So that's why uh, the hidden is uh, sequence length and hidden dim. But of course, uh, if I have uh, more directions, like I have uh, two directions, then I will have uh, more. And if I have also more layers, uh, then I will also have uh, more, right? So num layers time direction, right? In here, I have two layers, right? So my hidden uh, definitely is two. And uh, I don't think I use uh, by directional equal to two, right? Uh, True, right? So then that would be probably two uh, sequence length hidden. Then. Great. Now, finally, uh, what do we do? We send this output to self the dropout uh, output. All right. And finally, we're just going to do prediction equal to self dot fc uh, output. Yep, that's it, right? So we once we have this output, uh, we're going to send this to a linear layer, right, in which it accept hidden dim and predict the next vocab, right? And the, the probability is basically across all this vocab size we have. And then uh, the prediction is basically um, batch size and uh, sequence length. And each of them, for each of those, them, but we're going to have uh, a probability of all the vocab size, all right? Uh, and then we're going to return the prediction and hit it. Great. So that is uh, how the, the forward function is. It's very, very uh, straightforward. It just uh, uh, predict the next token, right? And then the return the prediction, right? And uh, we all also also return the hidden so that it can be freed to, to the next hidden uh, and then keep on predicting the next token, right? Because uh, you can see that the hidden uh, keep on uh, pre uh, is carried forward, right? Uh, so so we, we return this uh, hidden. Um, and uh, now we can actually uh, code the init width weights a little bit. Um, they are not so really... Uh, uh, important, uh, but but I let let me let us do the easy one first. In a hidden, hidden is basically hidden equal to uh, torch some zeros. So I've got num layers, um, bad size. If you don't do this hit in a hidden, uh, then uh, uh, the 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 team will do this do this for you. But the reason why again why I need to edit hidden is because. I want to make sure I have uh, full control of this hidden, right? Sometime I need to reset, then I have to uh, call this detach hidden. Sometime I want to carry forward, then I can also uh, use this hidden and carry forward. Um, so, uh, torch.zeros, uh, self.num layers. Uh, actually, I, sh I should have copied from It's the same, right? And then uh, uh, return uh, hidden and sell, right? So this two function, this function will be called in the, during training and we can take a look at how this uh, is used. Uh, we also have a detached hidden uh, and again, uh, 
is gonna take um, hidden, and uh, this is gonna be hidden cell equal to uh, hidden, right? And then um, hidden um, equal to hidden dot detach, right? And then the cell equal to cell dot detach and uh, return the hidden and cell, right? So you, so this is a little bit confusing. Like, why why do you do this uh, hidden uh, hidden cell equal to hidden? Basically, this hidden is basically returned by LSTM. And when when it's returned by LSTM, there's two things that it's actually returned, the actual hidden and the cell stance, right? So that's why this is a two-pole. And then I uh, detach it, right? To make sure that uh, uh, it's, it's, it's a reset, right? Yeah, uh, the detach is basically uh, uh, not to be used uh, for uh, gradient computation, right? This can uh, help us uh, uh, make uh, the model uh, when we retrain uh, is more efficient, right? Because when we backpropagate, we just uh, backpropagate uh, based on the, the loss, right? So we don't really need to use the hidden for uh, gradient computation, yep. And then uh, we have also the init weights and the init um, range uh, MB equal to 0 0.1. And um, okay, I'm just gonna uh, uh, type this quickly and I'm just gonna explain later. Other equal to one divided by uh, math square root cell dot hidden and then uh, basically for the embedding um, weight I'm just gonna use uh, a function called uh, uh, uniform uniform and the underscore is for in place and uh, we're just gonna make sure that it start from here and uh, until uh, there, right? So this can be a little bit confusing, like why? Uh, well, uh, this is basically come from uh, reading papers and this is what people have uh, have uh, suggested, right? Because uh, by, by bounding them into uh, a very specific range, uh, it doesn't go uh, too, uh, too big, right? And uniform allow us to make sure that uh, this has all the numbers that uniformly, Otherwise, it will be zero. Then uh, it's difficult to learn, right? So we have a lot of numbers uh, between zero point one until the what is square root of hidden name? Let's say hidden name is one hundred twenty eight. The square root is like uh, like uh, eleven or something, like right? So so we make sure that we have all these numbers, right? And that uh, it can learn much better. Yep. That is what at least what scientists are saying. Uh, Solve dot fc uh, dot weight dot data dot uniform again and uh we're gonna do uh, uh minus uh in it okay and uh, in it range other yep okay so this is one making sure that the fc weight is around uh, minus uh 128 minus 11 to 11. Uh, again we are trying to control the, uh, the weight to be a very uh, constrained uh, uh, distribution so that it doesn't, when we train in Z0, right? Self dot um, FC dot bias um, dot data dot zero. Okay, so, so bias is not really uh, affecting a lot. So we just set them to zero. And underscore is for in place. It just applied right away. In range um, self dot num layers self dot um, LSTM, uh, dot all weights i zero right. So for each of the layer, right? Um, well, we want this to be. Um, so this is basically. Um, 
forge.flow tensor south on embed him comma south oops south dot uh, um hit them hit sorry give me one second uh south dot hit them and uh, dot uniform um and the range is basically minus uh in it range other and uh in it range uh other all right uh and then uh all right and then uh, self, uh, we're gonna just copy this. Uh, I'm gonna explain real quickly uh, uh, what is the zero and one, uh, but, and then uh, hit them, hit them and uh, yep, so that is correct. So basically uh, we, we're gonna loop to each of the layer and we're gonna set zero. Uh, create a tensor of that shape and make sure that the range is uh, in the square root of hidden dim. All right. And similarly, we're going to do for one. So you may wonder like what is zero and one? Well, zero and one, if you look at this picture, uh, when we apply the the, the RSTM, there's a WH and WE, right? So WE is basically uh, the one that actually worked with this X and uh, wh is the one that worked with the previous uh, hidden state right so so wh is basically this one so this one is basically uh, wh and this one is basically we in that picture all right uh, okay great so now we have this uh, in it weights and uh, i think uh, that should be okay Okay, great. So, yep. So let us uh, review it again, uh, what is uh, happening in this LSTM, right? So the, we have, uh, we sent the, so for example, uh, higher water E is, right? That could be the source, right? And then we sent to the embedding to convert into some embeddings uh, to perform dropout. And then we sent into uh, the LSTM, right? Uh, and then uh, based on that, we take the output and uh, perform prediction, all right? And uh, actually what we want is uh, is the last uh, word here. But anyway, I just sent the whole thing here and let you, we're gonna figure out that one anyone. Right, so that is the, the RSTM. Uh, Great. So now, uh, once we have uh, finished all the modeling, uh, now we can take a look at the training that I have set up for you. Right. So the training is uh, very similar to what we have uh, did in the previous uh, tutorial. So I have uh, written all the code for you. So here I set the vocab size the embedding them to be 1024. Uh, in the paper that I cited above, they used 400, the hidden them uh, 1024. Uh, Non layers two dropout rate is that right? So these are all the numbers that uh, we we experiment and try to get the best numbers, right? Uh, it depends on uh, tasks, so so you feel free to play around here. And then um, I just initialize the model, the optimizer. Here I'm using Adam. Uh, cross Adam is basically is very similar to uh, SGD, but basically having have uh, having have some. Uh, uh, um, learning rate that is adaptable, ad ad adaptive, uh, cross entropy. And now I print out the, so let, why not we run this, right? And print out, um, uh, so I have uh, some parameters that I should not, I have missing. I will, uh, let me go fix this and I will be back. All right, so I think, I know the problem. Uh, so in the init, I should have double underscore. Yep. Great. All right. And uh, now it should run. All right. So our our model is actually uh, quite big. Is there are seventy seven million uh, parameters, right? And that uh, 
Uh, I also prepared uh, some Git batch, right? Uh, in which it just uh, set the source to be uh, the that index until uh, a certain sequence line, and then just plus one, right? So we want to based on this source, we want to predict the target, the target, right? So is that this is a very uh, simple Git batch here. And let's take a look at um, our training uh, function that I have created uh, for you already. So um, I set the loss to zero. I set the train to make sure that drop out and all the batch normalization if I have, uh, uh, making sure is um, is dead. And then num batches uh, is basically equal to the data dot shape minus one. And this is basically the sequence length, right? Right, and uh, I'm making sure that I grab all the data that can be mod with the sequence like I specify. And then, uh, yep, and now I I, I I get the num batches again to make sure that uh, this is uh, the actual num batches. And now I, uh, I'm making sure that for every epoch, every time I train, whenever I get a new epoch, I will uh, initialize the hidden again, right? To make sure that the previous um, hidden does not affect the new epoch, otherwise the uh, the training won't be valid. Yep. Um, and then um, uh, I set the optimizer zero grad right, so clear all the gradients right. Whenever I I start training, and then uh, again, like I said, I detach a hidden from the model, uh, so that uh, because hidden is does not really affect our training right so the uh, so we don't really need to put them into the computational graph and then here i just uh, get the batch according to this index right so this index we're going to run right keep on running and we're going to have a lot of different batch of data and then we send this to the gpu and then finally we send to this to the rstm and uh we need to do some uh, reshaping, otherwise we cannot do the criterion, right? And then we send, uh, we get the cross entropy loss, right? Back propagate, uh, clip the loss a little bit to make sure it does not uh, explode, and then uh, a corner, right? So this is the training, um, and again for the evaluation, that is basically the same. I just put the eval up here, and everything is the same. Uh, now this is the actual uh, training. Um, here I'm using something called um, optimizer learning scheduler, uh, re reduce LR on plateau. Basically, it just uh, decreases the learning rate by a factor uh, if if uh, if uh, the loss don't, don't improve uh, by a certain epoch, right? So factor is uh, uh, fifty, so it will reduce the learning rate by fifty, right? Um, all right, so now this is that, and I just call the training function and apply this uh, learning scheduler step and, and learn the loss, right? And of course, uh, I want to make sure that to keep the best practice, uh, it always um, uh, save the best model, right? Whenever the loss is in improving. And here I'm just uh, printing the perplexity, which is basically the exponent, exponent uh, of a train loss, right? I'm not gonna run this uh, line of code, because, uh, but we can try to make sure that it's running. Okay, uh, I have uh, some uh, errors here. Let me fix, I will be back in one second. All right, I'm back and uh, I just realized that when I actually create the model, I did not uh, the batch size and also the device. All right. So I have to rerun this again and uh, rerun everything. All right. Now, hopefully there will be no errors in this uh, code. All right. So you can see a very nice uh, uh, progress bar that is training. Right, and uh, it would take uh, quite uh, uh, a big amount of time uh, before this finish. Right, let let let. Okay, now we can see one percent, maybe 
Um, we're not going to wait this, um, but I'm just going to open the, what I have trained and show you guys. Okay. So let me interrupt this. All right. So I have interrupt this. And now let me just open the one that I have already trained. So this is all their training. And you can see that my, my loss or perplexity is actually reducing uh, gradually. And you can say that uh, if, if I keep training, uh, probably um, the trend is uh, is, is down, going down a little bit by like very little, but maybe you, you can keep training and maybe it's get better. Yeah, but I stop here. And now I have uh, tried to load the PT and applied on my testing set. And I found that my complexity is 123, right? Very close to... Uh, the validation uh, perplexity on the validation data sets. And now I can actually perform the uh, real world inference. So I'm not going to talk too much here in my generation function. I just uh, take in the prompt, convert, apply tokenizer, apply numericalization, and then uh, convert into tensor, and then put it into the model, take the softmax, right? And uh, and uh, I have to apply minus one because I want the last um, last sequence length uh, because I want to predict the last, next token, right? I will take the last word, right? Wh what they predict. And uh, then now uh, I just uh, simply uh, take that probabilities and then apply multinomial uh, probability and sample them. And I want just one sample from this probabilities. So you can you can imagine that there's a lot of vocabs and all of them have a lot of probabilities. When I do multinomial, uh, so so for example, let's say that I have uh, like I have uh, the next token is a uh, ease and the probability is zero point three, and I have on and the probability is zero point five, and I have uh, next I have uh, eat and the probability is zero point two. Then what this multinomial is basically is doing is create a list of something like uh, ease, 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 and on, 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 and eat, and eat. And then based on this, uh, you you try to sample one sample, right? And this, of course, there's a higher probability of having on and more than. Why do you not just take the maximum? Uh, well, if you just take the maximum, uh, the sentence would be very boring. And that is not the actual right way, right? So you want to have some uh, probabilistic uh, behavior. Uh, this is basically if it's unc, then sample again. If it's EOS, then break. Yep. And uh, here I just uh, apply Harry Potter ease, and then uh, this is the example. This is what is happening. All right. So the yep, I think uh, I would not keep the video too long, and um, you guys can go and take a look and. Uh, if there's any part that is difficult, try to pause the video, try to run by line by line, and you should get a better understanding. Yep. Thank you very much, and see you.